Hey there, everybody. Welcome again to another Star Wars video. All right, so finally, <laughs> after like a week delay, i finally be able to see Star Wars The Last Jedi, which was a really big deal and has been very controversial among the online community. And you know what? It was finally good to see this film to get my take on it personally, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I've been a fan since I was like nine. It's been going on for a long time, and finally I can put my input and give it to all of you. So you know what? I'm, first off, I'm just going to let you know right ahead of time, I loved it. I absolutely love this film. I think there was so much good about it, and I think it put the franchise in such a different direction than any of us expected. I made a video of my top 10 hopes for the film, and actually like half of them came true, but they didn't come true in how they ever thought they would. So, I actually, I applaud Ryan Johnson for being able to do such a good job with this film, despite not being anything like what I expected. Now, it's not to say that there weren't scenes where I called total BS on some of these things. I still loved it for what it was, and it was such a good film, I can't wait for episode 9 to see how everything rounds out. But, because I liked it so much, first I'm going to start off and talk about the things I didn't like for my review, and then I'm going to go into the things I did like. So first thing I hated, which I already alluded to, Princess Leia. I hate what they did with Princess Leia. It was great to see her in this general role. I mean, she's been a general for quite a while. It was good to see her function repeatedly in talking with Poe Dameron and try to get him to learn the right way of doing things as a leader within a massive organization like that. But when she was blasted out of the sky and she actually was sitting in space unconscious she was dealing with the cold darkness of it and then all of a sudden she wakes up with the force and then she pulls herself back into her ship come on bro there's no way that should have ever worked i hated that so much princess leia should be dead right now as much as i like her and as much as i wanted her to continue on no that was silly i never thought they would actually kill one of those adorable little birds but chewbacca cooked and ate one, well he probably ate one, but the good thing is he made friends with them eventually, but he actually killed one! <laughs> Another thing I didn't like, Finn. Finn has been this like, dumb, coward, idiotic character, when his trajectory in The Force Awakens was, that's what he was, he wanted to get away, and then he was a coward, he's trying to run away from the First Order, and then he became kind of a hero of the Resistance. And in this film, he starts out by being the opposite. He is a coward. And I really didn't like that. It took another character, Rose, to push him into being a hero eventually. So that really bummed me out because I think there's so much more you can do with him and they weren't doing it. Now I will say he was semi-redeemed at the end when he took a charge at the First Order's attack, but I appreciate them doing that, but it took all film to do it when he should have probably started that way. Uh, the death of Lord Snoke didn't sit entirely well with me. I mean, Lord Snoke, we, again, we don't know a lot about his background from the films, but what we do know is that he was supposed to be the big bad of these films. He's, you know, supposed to be the Darth Sidious to the Darth Vader of the old trilogy, and that's what he's supposed to be to Kylo Ren. And I don't have a problem with him not necessarily being that character because there wasn't much of a build-up. We learned all we needed to know about Lord Snoke, is that he is an ancient Force user, he is very good at it, and he is quite smart. Now, where I do have a problem is, all we know about him is those things, but then he dies extremely easily thanks to a Kylo Ren force push with a lightsaber. That's what really gets me. I mean, anyone can die because of any stupid mistake. That is true. But it's surprising that, considering how strong he was, like, he probed the information about Luke Skywalker out of Rey's mind in, like, a second. And Kylo Ren couldn't do that all last film. Remember, Rey fought off Kylo Ren. So... Knowing that he is like infinitely more powerful than Kylo Ren, it's amazing that he couldn't figure out in Kylo's thoughts that Kylo Ren really wanted to kill Snoke instead of Rey. So, I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with Snoke being gone, just the way it went down. This may be the only problem with the writing that I think I found, but I haven't seen the film more than once, so I could be wrong about this. That whole thing with Finn, Rose, and DJ after DJ was picked up by Finn and Rose on Canto Bite, trying to get him to break the code to stop the tracking of the Resistance main ships. And my problem is, of course, DJ, we find out, ends up selling Finn and Rose out and telling the First Order exactly where those transport ships were going, which was to the planet of Crate. And DJ probably shouldn't have known that they were actually going to Crate. I mean, from what I remember, Poe Dameron did tell Finn over a communicator that they had transport ships that were going to be leaving the main ship eventually, and but they didn't say exactly what planet they were going to. Now, DJ was there for the conversation, so it's not a plot hole that he knew about the plan, but it is a small plot hole that he knew they were going to Crate. 
that's kind of the big problem for me. No Knights of Ren. This is uh, this is the band that Kylo Ren is the master of that we haven't seen. I mean, they were mentioned in two different films, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, both by Supreme Leader Snoke. We only get a little snippet of the Knights of Ren in Rey's visions in The Force Awakens. And I was very surprised by that. I thought we would have in this film. I'm not, like, terribly disappointed, but it would have been nice to see them. Uh, in the films, I guess they decide they just weren't worthy enough for that to happen. Maybe they'll do something cool to become, like, guards for Kylo Ren or something kind of like how supreme leader snoke had his elite praetorian guards maybe the knights of ren will kind of be his posse oh yeah and i absolutely hated what went down with captain phasma i mean it was great that we finally got to see gwendolyn christie brandish the armor come back and fight finn and you know kind of what we all expected to happen but she really went down fast i mean that character is probably gone permanently and for as much as it's been marketed it was an extremely underwhelming character so uh it's pretty disappointing to see them go without doing anything awesome because so far they're going to be remembered for being put into a trash compactor and losing to Finn and Adul who has been constantly shown as a coward so that's kind of a bummer. And the last kind of thing I didn't really like about the film um, it really hurt to see Luke Skywalker be such a sourpuss. I I get why for the story it makes a ton of sense to have him as this old bitter Jedi. I mean his whole temple was brought down because he was trying to train the next generation and he thought he had failed as a Jedi master and really ruined something very special. He ruined his sister's child and one of his best friend's child in addition to the Jedi Order. So I can understand why he's so miserable but you didn't have to go that route from a plot standpoint and it's really tough to see him go out as that guy when you've been watching these for such a long time you think of luke skywalker the doe-eyed kid from tatooine just drinking his blue milk just wanting to go to the tashi station to pick up some power converters and he wants to fight off the rebellion and he's just he's this young enthusiastic guy and then you see him turn into this it's very upsetting, but based off of the story that Ryan Johnson w had written, I don't know. In the grand scheme of things, it's a bummer to see Luke Skywalker go down like that. All right, so that's all the negative stuff out of the way. And mind you, a lot of that's not even that big of a deal. Those are just the only things I didn't like about it. But let's talk about the positive things about the film. First one being the acting of Adam Driver. Absolutely loved everything from this guy in this movie. I mean, he went through the emotional roller coasters that we expected for his character. I wish Anakin Skywalker was even like a tenth of as well acted as Adam Driver did with Kylo Ren. It would have just been, it was such a better prequel trilogy. But anyway, I love what he did with that, how he was unwilling to kill his mother during that space battle, uh, the fight in the throne room when he killed Lord Snoke with Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, the fight with him and Rey, then offering Rey to join him and control the galaxy, and then his eventual super anger at Luke Skywalker at the end of the film, which caused the Resistance to get away from the First Order and basically left hope in the galaxy. And it was just all done so very, very well by Adam Driver. And I very much loved, love, love, love. This guy is now one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe. Kylo Ren is awesome. Oh, I already touched on this and the things I hated, but even though Chewbacca did, like, eat one of the Porgs, I love that Chewbacca became friends with all the Porgs. That was really fun because they're, like, these adorable little furry people. Chewbacca is, like, a adorable really big furry person and uh it, it was it was cool to see that and also that they didn't play as big of a role as people thought like they were marketed everywhere and it was good to see that they were really just super side characters just like Chewbacca loved the throne room scene on Supreme Leader Snoke ship that was super awesome I mean you expect Kylo Ren is about to kill Rey which I mean no one really expected but you didn't know what was going to happen and then instead Kylo kills Supreme Leader Snoke, and it's like, whoa, what is about to happen right now? Because he's dead. The big bad guy's dead. So that means Kylo's definitely good now, right? So Kylo and Rey fight off all the Praetorian guards to take him down, and they try to rule together, or at least that's what Kylo Ren wants. And now it doesn't happen, but there's a long period of time where you're like, whoa, Kylo Ren's good again. That's awesome. I can't believe it's actually happening. Like, that seems too good to be true. Then it ended up being too good to be true. But you at least went through like an emotional roller coaster, which was super awesome. I loved the scene. The fighting was excellent. The only thing I was perplexed by, why didn't Kylo Ren use the Force like at all during that whole sequence? That was kind of silly. 
Big fan of Luke Skywalker showing up in the end on Planet Crates. I mean, he showed up and it wasn't really him. It ended up being revealed that he was actually a projection of Luke Skywalker from totally across the universe. It was great that even though he wasn't there, he had made that decision as a character to be the sign of hope for the Resistance and for the galaxy, to get over the nonsense that he had restricted himself to in that he's a giant failure. He decided he would stand out there, face Kylo Ren, confront him about what had gone on. And I loved it. I loved it so much. I will say that they gave away a ton of clues that Luke Skywalker wasn't actually there. Um, I noticed like two of them and I assumed he wasn't, but I wasn't totally sure. First of all, the planet they were on, I mean the sand, when you stepped on it or did anything to it, it turned red. When he's walking, there's no footsteps left by Luke Skywalker, so that's clue one. The clue that I picked up immediately when it happened was Luke was using his lightsaber from A New Hope, which was Anakin Skywalker's old lightsaber. And this is the one that Kylo Ren and Rey had pulled apart about 10 minutes prior in the film in Snoke's throne room. So it was impossible for Luke to be wielding that lightsaber because it was destroyed. Also his hair was totally different. I mean, you could cut the hair, I guess, but his hair was totally dyed. It was not gray anymore. Either way, I thought it was an awesome part of the film. Now, you want to see Luke go out in a blaze of glory by fighting Kylo Ren and probably beating him, but being cheated, kind of like Arthur Dane in Game of Thrones. But I'm glad he actually went out becoming one with the Force, looking out at the two sons, like on Tatooine, kind of like how he started out the entire franchise. It was it was a good way for him to go out to be at one with the force and be at peace And that was that was super awesome. It's sad to see Luke Skywalker go, but it's a hell of a way to go Oh, and speaking of Luke Skywalker the appearance of the force ghost Yoda I loved this scene so much when Yoda shows up It took me right back to Empire Strikes Back when Luke was training with Yoda and Yoda was being that goofy like Muppet figure uh, it, it was so cool because Luke being the cynic he was, he was actually, he was snapped right out of that. Just having the old Yoda right there to just school him about stuff. Because Luke, for this period of time, has been the last of the Jedi. He's been chilling and he's had this incredible burden on his shoulders to make the right decision for the Order. And Yoda pops in and basically gets to be that father mentor figure that he is sorely needed throughout this process and hasn't had. And the best thing Yoda could have done, which I actually didn't realize Force Ghosts could do, maybe this was something where they took a liberty with that um, other Star Wars experts hate about the film, is that he brought down a lightning bolt to take out the sacred Jedi tree on his planet. So. That was kind of disappointing to see that go down. It's like, oh my god, the textbooks are all burnt. But then Yoda's like, do you think the textbooks mean anything? Is there anything in there that Rain needs? No, come on, man. They're all just words. And could you read them anyway? Which, by the way, those textbooks aren't gone. They're on the Millennium Falcon. But even more importantly, because the textbooks were gone and Yoda brought down the lightning bolt, that was more symbolic than anything for Luke Skywalker's character. To stop holding on to the past, let it burn, move forward, and help out the damn galaxy. Now, this is going to be a weird positive, but you got to stick with me on this one. Seeing Kylo Ren without a shirt on. Now, the reason why I say this is, when I was in the theater, I saw Kylo Ren, and then he turned around, and bam, no shirt. But I went, this guy's actually got a little bit of muscle. Now, if you're like me, I watched The Force Awakens, and I saw, there's Kylo Ren. He's not very intimidating. He kind of looks like Gumby. He's built like Gumby, nice and flat. So, I assume physically... He's not very imposing, right? Because I didn't think so. And then when you watch this film, The Last Jedi, shirtless, you see he's got some muscle going on up here. You go, this guy may have a little bit of strength behind him. I may be a little scared if I ran into an alley with this guy and had to fight him. You never know. So now I actually have that up in my mind, and I think he's a little bit more dangerous than he was before. So uh, if that's the reason why, which I'm assuming it is, the director did a great job at putting that forward without really having to pointed out. Oh, another thing I love, the additions of characters Admiral Haldo and also Rose. Haldo was super awesome. I was excited right away because she was from the movie Jurassic Park, and she came in there, she kept shutting down Poe Dameron. There was this period of time in the film where I thought she was a spy for the First Order, and eventually finding out that she's actually good, and she ends up saving everyone by going to light speed and taking out Lord Snoke's ship. That was super brave and super awesome. And also the character of Rose, who should be an inspiration to everyone. She's definitely Rookie of the Year for this film. She's lovable right from the beginning when she tases Finn. She sticks to duty and honor. Her sister dies for the sake of the resistance and she just keeps moving forward. She makes a sacrifice if she has to. She's basically the opposite of Finn and makes Finn be the guy that we all want him to. And at the end, she even ties her storyline to Finn because she kisses him before she eventually passes out. Now, it doesn't look like she's dead, thankfully, 
So for episode nine, we're gonna be able to see that romance grow a little bit more. I think I'm gonna like Rose more than Finn in that romance, so that's awesome. Speaking of new heroes, we have Poe Dameron finally steps up to the plate. He tries to be the leader of the resistance several times because you know how he is. He's just like a gunslinger. He wants to just shoot stuff down, you know, like blow it up, ask questions later. And throughout the film, he was smacked down so many times by Princess Leia and Admiral Haldo that he eventually got to the point of being the main leader of the resistance. That was super cool. Cause like I, like I was just kind of saying, to summarize, he was basically being treated kind of like Thor was in the first Thor film by his father, Odin. Whereas, like, all right, you're supposed to be the new leader, but you have to stop being vain and cruel and wanting to kill everything in order for you to do that. And eventually, by the end of this film, Poe proved himself to be worthy of Mjolnir and ends up leading the Resistance for Episode Nine, more than likely, because Princess Leia kind of gave up control. And that was awesome to see Poe move past just a cheap Han Solo copy to be a different character. And lastly, I love how director Ryan Johnson handled that long drawn out scene on Canto Bite when Rose and Finn had to go and find the Codebreaker, which ended up being DJ in the end. This was great because it seemed like it was just worthless and just a reason to put Benicio Del Toro in it, but it was actually so important to me. I think what this did was, this helped set up the next few films. This helped set up with the Resistance being so small and so hopeless, this provided the hope that we were looking for. When they were in that casino and they saw all the elites and DJ pointed out they made all their money from war, and then you see these little kids that were working with the animals that were doing the racing around the track, how they were being mistreated and how they were fans of the resistance and they wanted to be against the elite. That was super important because you got to see at the very end, the fruition of all of this. You got to see the little boy with the force abilities grab the broom using a force pull. And that was what it was all about. Him with that resistance and rebellion ring. That was the future of the franchise. And that's what that whole scene was about. It wasn't just getting DJ, it was setting up the galaxy, the common folk, fighting against the evil empire slash the First Order. And that's that's why it was so important, it was so well done. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. So yes, uh, after a long drawn out video, yes, I absolutely love this film. I cannot understand why so many people hate it. I know uh, other YouTubers that are friends of mine that I respect very much. They said they disliked it because they kind of trashes some old characters and it basically says kind of like F you to some of the old expanded universe stuff. Now I've read some of the expanded universe stuff and I accepted a lot of it. Like the emperor had a clone at one point. Luke Skywalker created a new temple. He had several kids with Mara Jade. Uh, Chewbacca died with a planet falling on him. Like, <laughs> I accept a lot of these things, but um, I like what's going on right now. I like it a hell of a lot. Okay, actually the last thing I'll say relating to the film. When Kylo Ren says that Rey knew all along that her family was just a bunch of junkers and she was abandoned in exchange for some alcohol, I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second. I know that both of those characters accepted that to be the truth. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that Rey is a nobody. I cannot. I don't believe she has these inherent awesome force abilities and is absolutely no one. In my mind, Kylo Ren has every reason in the world to lie about this to Rey. I mean, he may like Rey to some degree having some kind of connection to her, but in that moment, she was extremely vulnerable. And this only helped him try to get her on his side. So I believe that she has some kind of significant parents. It's not over yet, folks. It's not over. All right, that's going to do it for the video. Thanks so much for watching, as always. I hope you enjoyed this Star Wars The Last Jedi review. If you have any disagreements, any questions, comments, leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll be more than glad to talk to you about it. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked what went on in this video. Also, remember, if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out these Star Wars right up here. This one is my expectations for The Last Jedi, see how I did, and also my Game of Thrones content, which is pretty terrific. And if you want to see more in the future, just hit the subscribe button right up here, and make sure you hit the little bell so you get all the notifications as soon as I upload a new video on the front of your YouTube page. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day, everybody. Take care. Goodbye.